Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in business with Attack on Titan. I can't believe it. The wait is over. The wait is over. Now, we're only getting 12 episodes this season uh, because of budgetary reasons. At least that's what an article that I read said. But hey, man, the quality was definitely worth the wait. Uh, it also happens to be my birthday today, so I'm just, you know, what a great gift to receive. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where to start, but essentially I'm just going to give you some background. So I, I don't keep up with the manga, and I needed to fight that urge like crazy back when season one ended, because obviously my instincts were to find out what happened next. But I fought it, and I fought it, and it was hard. Later, it became a little bit easier because people were telling me that the manga became more political than, than action-oriented. But that's besides the point. Uh, so I, I actually stood my ground and I fought that urge to just stay away from the manga so that I, because I fought the urge precisely because I had hope that one day this would happen. We would get a season two and I could just go into the anime and experience it without knowing too much about it. Now, I will not lie. There were some people back when I was reviewing season one that did spoil uh, the identity of some of the Titans. I couldn't avoid it. It was just, it was just there. You know, I, I was, I was reading the comments. Boom. But whatever. All right. Now the identities are very important plot points. But all right, they're not the story. So I'm still surprised about the story because I have no idea what's going to happen. This, this beast titan that showed up today, he got me shook. I don't know who he is. I don't know why. Why can't he talk? Why can he command the other titans? That's crazy to me. That is so. Not only that, but the fact that he grabbed the horse, that was just really weird because as we know, titans don't mess with animals. They just, just attack humans. So, yeah, it was just such a great experience to watch, just being completely ignorant. But before I get into the actual episode, we got to talk about that opening. Holy crap, that was a great opening. Better better than opening two, by far, I think, the animation, the music fits a lot better. Uh, you know, it, Sasageo, Sasageo. I really like the, the best shot, in my opinion, in this entire opening is the shot where we have the wall and the troops, the squad is lined up and we have the camera pan, you know, from the from the back to the front. Squad goals. That is squad goals right there. You know that moment is special because even the music changes. You hear a little voice that goes like, ooh, oh, man. and then they jump out of the wall and they look like ants facing these Titans that are coming at them. Oh my gosh, Mikasa. Mikasa always has some of the best freaking scenes in these openings, man. She's you know just going around with her maneuver gear and stuff, grabs Eren by the arm and then throws him at the armored Titan. And Eren's like, let's go, baby, I'm ready. Transformation time. Eren versus the armored Titan, 1v1, let's go. I hope we actually get to see the fight play out in the series and it's not just a scuffle, but we'll see. Also, even before that even happens, there's like a shot of like, well, the camera's like following this horse who's like dodging rocks and shit coming at it. That was just some great camera work, even though it's not really, you know, a camera. It's just the way that you plan out the, the shots for, for the animation. But it's just so great. It looks amazing. Also, the Beast, the Beast Titan is insane. I guess he can command, he can command dinosaurs. He can command whales, flying whales, mind you. <laughs> Um, yeah, just all types of shit coming at him. Like, what is going on? Where did this guy even come from? Why Why is he able to command these guys like this? He's using horses like weapons. Fly, horsey. Look at that horsey fly. Just like Pegasus. I think we're in for one hell of a season. Uh, especially because it's like, so it's 12 episodes. So you know, if you only have... 12 episodes to market the show, to actually, you know, you know, shoot it out for, for people and say, hey, this is what we're all about, then you have to make each of those episodes count. And I, I again, I was told that after season one, after the female Titan arc, the story kind of like, you know, it gets a little stale, uh, but I don't know, man. Judging from this episode alone, I don't, I see this as an upward slope right now. I mean, in just this one episode, the threat of the Titans against humanity has increased. And that's one of the things that I love about this show is that the stakes are high. We're not, we're not dicking around in the show, okay? People die. Um, so they busted through Wall Rose in this episode. Wall Maria has been down for a while now. After Maria comes Rose, and then after Rose, the only thing that's left is John Cena. We're losing our defenses here. I mean, this is, this is not looking good for humanity. And so we have Squad 104, you know, going out on the horses. Again, they thought, they were very comfortable. They were like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we got them. We, we outspeed them because of the horses. The Titans did something crazy, started blitzing, right? Started running around like crazy. Like, what is going on? So Sasha and Connie, Connie is from the south uh, part of the area. So he knows that he's going to be the one, I guess, kind of like leading, leading the expedition or just so, sort of like getting people out of there because that's a problem. You got to warn them to just leave because it's no longer safe. We also have Mike. Mike! 
he went into the slaughter head first. He's like, you know, I'll, I'll try and keep them off your ass for a little bit. And he did take down some Titans. Uh, we actually didn't get to see much of the action. We saw him take down one, but, you know, uh, he actually does a swerve. He's about to attack one, and it, and it cuts to, like, the middle, the middle portion of the episode. So that was cut out. But, you know, props to him. This is actually a good reminder of how powerful the Titans are in terms of breaking people down psychologically. Because in the beginning, you see Mike and he's like, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a pretty confident looking leader. He has this ideology of like, no matter what happens, you just keep fighting. You just keep holding the line. That's what matters in combat. He meets the Beast Titan. What happens? He crumbles psychologically. And he's supposed to be number two, right? Because in this episode, it was mentioned like the only one who tops Mike is Levi. So, I mean, he, he still crumbled. And, you know, it's expected because he didn't expect this, this huge, hairy freaking Titan to be shouting out orders to the other Titans. These Titans, these, they, they freeze in their tracks. You know what I noticed? It's always the creepiest looking Titan that puts in the most work in the episode. It's always, like, these showrunners literally want us to focus our attention on these nasty, creepy-ass monsters so that we get, like, hooked on, on the experience and come back. Um, which we do. Uh, anyway, the Beast Titan, uh, I think, is seems to be some type of like a reconnaissance unit. Because he's asking all these questions about the maneuver gear. And I'm like, oh, I guess this means you figured out the, the weakness on our necks and stuff. And, you know, if he's the only one or one of the few who can talk, it would make sense that he would just use that ability to sort of benefit his cause. That's actually one of the biggest questions, I think, uh, related to the series, is that whose side are the titans on are they are they working for not working for somebody but you know what i mean it's like this guy beast took the took the maneuver gear and he's like i need to report back or something so who is he reporting back to why is he gathering all this information who is he gathering that information for you know what what do the titans want what do they want to accomplish because initially you know it was just like freaking chaos it's like all oh, these monsters are eating people but now it's it's became, it's becoming a little bit more clear that there's actually a purpose for all this blood being shed. I'm not saying it's right, it's messed up, but there's definitely something, there's there's more than what meets the eye in this case, especially because in the beginning scene of this episode, Hanji is about to commit murder, just throw this pastor off the ledge, which I kind of wanted, I mean, I'm, you know, I'll admit, I kind of wanted it to happen because it's like, you, he's not telling you, why would you keep him alive? It's It's, it's really messed up that they're actually keeping this a secret from citizens that are you know especially from the army like these guys are literally risking their lives and that's what hanji hanji tells this guy you do know that these people we have we have friends that are dying right now and you you didn't even say anything about why the walls have titans in them and what's up with the sunlight too what's going on so if the sun hits them they're gonna get energy like they're gonna just recharge and just rampage all over the place are they like superman they get their energy from the sun. Because the eye of that titan did start moving at first. Pretty good character moment for Hanji because she got pushed to the limit, you know. And, and when characters get pushed to the limit, that's when they show us who they really are. In this case, you know, she decided not, not to go through with the plan of, like, letting the guy go. Uh, that being said, we also get a pretty good scene with Aaron and Mikasa. Aaron's getting, like, a sort of, like, a dream flashback sequence of his mom telling him, you gotta take care of Mikasa, even though Mikasa really doesn't need anybody to take care of her. In fact, it's usually the other way around. Mikasa is usually the one taking care of Aaron in a lot of situations. But this is, genuinely, this is relationship goals, all right? Because she literally fell asleep by his side, just keeping an eye on him. There's a moment that focuses on the scarf that Aaron gave her when they first met, and... Okay, so does he remember that he actually gave her that scarf? Because <laughs> he's like, I'll just replace it. You know, it's, it's, it's torn or something. I'll just get you a new one. Or maybe he does remember, but he just doesn't realize how important that scarf, you know, what it means to Mikasa. Hey, asshole, it means she likes you, okay? Get the hint already. But anyway, they're going into battle. At least that's what the preview for next week tells us. Uh, next week also is going to center around Potato Girl, Sasha. I love, I love that character. She's super super quirky and funny. I, I'm getting some death flags when it comes to Connie, but that's just me. Uh, hopefully, like, you know, uh, Squad 104 will complete the mission of getting as many people out of there as possible. The ending was actually pretty eerie, uh, just just the music, the sound of it, and also the visuals, but it works. It works for this for this anime, because you're supposed to feel uncomfortable. It's like, it's, it's, it's not good times. The scene with Mike was brutal. It was a total bloodbath. I'm kind of thinking about whether or not, had he not yelled at the Beast Titan, 
do you think that the beast titan would have just you know called them off and be like or just or just left them there paralyzed and just he would that have created an opening for mike to get away because that would have been better but yeah he yelled and the beast titan's like eat him up boys so sucks for mike uh, you know it's a good episode when the majority of the episode doesn't center around the main characters and you're still intrigued. You're still hooked. So thank you for watching. I thought this was a great episode of Attack on Titan. A uh, great opener for the season. Let me know what you thought down below. Like the video if you did and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.